हेलो गुड इवनिंग सो वेलकम टू सेशन ट्वेल्व फेशियल मसल्स प्लस विल आल्सो बी टेकिंग द स्कल्प एंड वन मेथड ऑफ लर्निंग फेशियल मसल इज यू मेक दैट बोरिंग टेबल राइट राइट डाउन नेम ऑफ ऑल द मसल्स एंड देन यू कीप ऑन एडिंग दैट व्हाट एक्सप्रेशंस दे एक्चुअली मेक राइट डेफिनेटली यू विल फॉरगेट इट हाँ बिफोर वी रियली स्टार्ट the very important thing disclaimer definitely images displayed during this medical training session they are for educational purpose and not at all all these images they are suitable for all ages i am good thank you ankit so let's start with our today's session yes there'll be scary images but but now to you are seasoned right so there won't be any problem okay so let's start with something we we should really know because these terms they will be used again and again right so let's let's draw right that's 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 nose right okay so this is this is like we need to name them this is forehead right so that was fine right this is easy but then that opening that opening because upper lid and lower lid that opening right where where we see that that okay this is eye right that is palpebral fissure palpebral fissure because these names they will be used okay this is over here right that would be root of nose so that is root of nose when we know that because we learned that but this this portion this soft portion where right this one right it it's like in boxing when you hit you you break someone's and that's called as the columnella right columnella that median soft tissue right just between two nares two nares that median soft tissue so it is that median soft tissue right between two nares all right uh very interesting right where where you do that bindi right that is called as the glabella right that is called as the glabella right then above the eyebrows right if you touch you will find that yes there is prominence right there is there is prominence so that is what is called as the supra orbital margin right makes sense right supra orbital margin about the orbits so far things are easy then why to why to call mouth has simple mouth right a new name a good name is there it is called as the oral fissure baba it is like just say mouth but no oral fissure okay then let's let's draw these upper lips okay and just above the upper lip right there is a depression right that is what is called as the philtrum remember the spelling philtrum bas i think this much is enough okay, okay. so with this contacts let's start with our first image now what we'll do is we'll not try to cram anything as always right we'll try to see that actually if the muscle is over there will it be really making that expression so that's how we shall <laughs> learn and one game could it could be right right now the focus on this but just keep calculating that how many muscles how many names of the muscles they come during the entire path right it would be a great fun 
by the way after completion of this from monday we are starting brain in three sessions three or four sessions right we'll actually be creating the complete foundation that is inside the skull right we'll see that how all those fox cerebri everything is tentorium cerebral everything is arranged then we'll start putting components that is specific brains and then we'll feed them into the blood vessels and then all the way to the cranial nerves right that's how so head and neck is not complete right we'll take the brain in between and then we'll be studying the nerves of the entire head and neck obviously the blood vessels and everything and and then we'll be going for specific topics like say eyeball right that is ear socket then ear uh, so all, all those things they'll come okay so here is the first muscle right this is this is the muscle which is surrounding so we'll call it orbicularis orbicularis we have seen this muscle and it is surrounding the eyeball so it is orbicularis oculi right now this orbicularis oculi it is divided into three parts one part which is for normal closure of the eye right when you blink your eye when or when you gently close your eyes so closing close eyes softly right so that is that is the first part now this is what is called as the palpebral part right palpebral so here it is say if i really draw it like this right this is palpebral part you can say this palpebral part or the inner part right inner part and this inner part is thin yeah obviously right if you touch over here on your eye eyes right it is a thin part so in between so that is what was the palpebral fissure correct palpebral fissure so in order to close this palpebral fissure in simple words eyes that is between two lids right this is the palpebral part of orbicularis oculi so this is the first part right this is the first part surrounding that right surrounding that this thicker structure right this is the thicker structure and that is that is this surrounding that is thicker and that is what is called as the ocular part right so this is ocular part so for the entire day we use this palpebral part but in the morning when mom used to say that chalo chalo go to school no bahut neend aa rahi and then we you do like this right that is the ocular part right that is how we use the ocular part so this is the outer part and it is a thicker one right it is a thicker one so that is the second one so this is shut the eyes tightly right tightly it is like bahut neend aa rahi hai the neend is coming or not that's a different story right and the third part is third part is it is like when we it is what is called as the lacrimal part right it is the lacrimal part now lacrimal means tears true so what this lacrimal part actually does is it it dilates lacrimal sac right i'll i'll write it over here right it's very interesting it dilates a lacrimal sac so when the lacrimal sac is dilated right actually the fluid will be sucked so that this now lacrimal gland is ready to fire right and definitely lacrimal glands they are much more dangerous so this is the lacrimal sac it dilates lacrimal sac to suck the fluid in so now this gland is ready right no doubt whether we say it or not but constantly right with every blink right there would be say uh, that lacrimal secretion and it will keep the eye moist 
So these are the three parts of first muscle, orbicularis oculi, right? The palpebral part, ocular part, and the lacrimal part. Okay. With this, when we talk about, say, this closing, then what about the opening, right? So to open the eyelids, right? To open... Some of the names, they are deadly names, right? Amazing names. So to open, we need to elevate, right? So it is what is called as the levator, right? Levator. So that means it will elevate. Palpebre, right? So this palpebral, so it is coming constantly, so that it is also pardonable, right? Levator, palpebre. And it is above, because then and then it will open the eye, eyelid, Right, so it is levator palpebrae superioris. Superioris, right? This is to open the eyelid. Open the eyelid, right? And I promise you, I'll give you one such name which you can utilize very effectively for for with a when there is a fight with a non medico, right? Such a great name, right? Very, very impressive, long, good, smart name, right? It will come, okay. So this is levator palpebrae superioris, right? That is to open the eyelid. From eyes, we move on to move on to mouth, right? So now, because their their names are similar, so again this is orbicularis because it will be surrounding another fissure that is the oral fissure, right? So this is orbicularis. Oris, orbicularis oris. This one would be the orbicularis oris. But this orbicularis oris is, is not operating individually. Right? So many muscles, they are working on it. Right? They will be working along with this muscle. And that's the reason, right, that you smile, you grin, right, less marks, are nai, right, all those expressions, yes, was thanks to this muscle and the association associated group right so let's see this what we really do is in order to understand it properly first let's see this muscle individually so we we'll remove all the associated muscles right so all associated muscles tuck right let it let them go and here it is that's the orbicularis oris loan so here it is, it is this one and this one, right? So surrounding, that is orbicularis oris. Now same way, in this also, there are superficial and there are deep fibers, right? So these are the superficial fibers, superficial fibers. Right? which are around the mouth or around the around the oral fissure okay what about the deeper one now you know that muscle very well right the name of that muscle the muscle which is it is buccinator correct buccinator buccinator is the muscle which is preventing which is preventing dilatation of cheeks, right? So it is keeping the cheeks flat. So what what purpose? Right? Whistling. Right? Whistling. Try to whistle. That is the joint operation of this buccinator. Right? Buccinator and and this orbicularis oris. Right? So because when you whistle, right? So so those cheeks are flattened. So that is the function of buccinator because if buccinator is not working right, there will be dilatation, right? That is ulta of buccinator. So this is, it flattens, flattens cheek. So how they both are associated? The deeper fibers, right? Those deeper fibers, those deep fibers of orbicularis oris, right? They are associated with vaccinator so that is one and 
what would be the as such overall function of this orbital oris oris? One, right? Surrounding the mouth, so close the lips. Normal, right? So close the lips. So that is the function. But they can work effectively, right? So that press the lips stronger. Right? If someone take, tells that chalo karela khao nai, right? So that that nai when you see him tighten the lips, right? So nai don't want to eat karela, right? So that is when press the lips together, right? So that is the function of orbicularis oris. Now, okay, I wrote something over here, but I'll write it at, right? I'll write it here. See. So these are the deep fibers, right? Deep fibers. Now you know this muscle, this one, right? That bulldog, right? Masseter. So that's masseter, right? This masseter and and the buccinator. In between, there is a, this is a space, correct? There is a space, and this space is covered by fat. Right, buccal fat. So now in the next image, exactly that area, right? That is what is covered by buccal fat pad. So this one is buccal fat pad. Classically between that uh, buccinator and the masseter. And this is the fat which is continuous with the fat over the cheek so all those chubby cheeks means it is this fat right so it is continuous with fat over the cheek okay. over the cheek so till this point these two major muscles they are done now comes the joint operations right orbicularis oris it is working in association with so many other muscles and that though that's how all those fantastic expressions are created let's start with the best expression first okay and this one this one is this one right see that's the muscle right so it is zygomatic because that's a zygomatic bone right so it is zygomaticus major that means there would be someone called minor also yes definitely there it will be there right now this zygomatic major now I'll, I'll just remove this so that you can see it properly this is the best muscle because this is the muscle for yes smile right this is for smile so very logical right just from here to right when it pulls right so it is smile so that is zygomaticus major the one more muscle right. say it's a viva right and you you come out of the examination room and friend asks right so it is not a smile right it is grin right grin so that is what is called as the grinning. Grinning. That is by this muscle over here. It is called as the risorius. Risorius. Right. So that is grinning. Every expression will keep on marking separately. Right, so that smile and grinning, such a big difference. But it is that just the difference of the angle, because when this is smile, so then it is, it is definitely this, right? And when this, so this is, this is grinning, right? Okay, so that is zygomaticus and risorius. The next muscle is now see. From smile, it went to grin. What about if the viva went bad? Viva went, no, so now you are sad, 
right? So in that case, when, when there is so much of sadness, right, it is the upper lip which is elevated, right? It is levator, labi. Lip means labi, right? Superioris means superior. So it is this muscle, this one, right? So this is, when this contracts, right, this is the muscle. When it contracts, it pulls the lip up, right? So this is levator, labi, superioris. That means there would be inferioris, surely it is there, right? And it makes one sad, right? Mm. So that sadness. But again, it is it is helped by someone else, right? And that is that. This, that particular muscle, though it is not here, I will will draw it, right? It would be it would be like this, like this, yeah. This is this would be the muscle. This is how it will be contracting, right? So it will be pulling it up. So it will be pulling it up. So this muscle, it is angle angle is elevated right angle of the mouth is elevated so this is levator anguli angle of angle of oral cavity right so anguli oris so see to become dukhi right you need to use two muscles and to become happy you need you need to use just one muscle right so use zygomaticus major because see to become sad right it's such a painful thing you have to use levator labi superioris and levator angularis so tough right so many muscles start to be used so that's how say these expression right so from smile to grin to sad okay to this we add one more muscle. Let's add it into a second figure. Yeah, that would be fine. Now you saw zygomaticus major, right? So this is zygomaticus major. Right? We'll write just in short. Then this was risorius, right? So risorius. And there were, sorry, and there were levator labis, right? Superioris and levator angularis to become that dukhi. What if, right, you want to show the attitude, to show someone that he or she is faltu, right? Don't do that, right? But that's the difference between, say, zygomaticus major, he is so humble, so good, right? Smile. This zygomaticus minor, which is just near over there, right? It is over here, right? This is zygomaticus minor, not in this present, but it is that's the location. This zygomaticus minor, right? Is for contempt, right? To insult someone, right? When we say, mm, right? So, contempt to feel that person that he or she is worthless, right? Not a good muscle. So, that's why God must have given a small muscle, right? Minor. So, that's the contempt. Okay. So, by the way, this was for grin, right? Resorius. Now, so many muscles are coming up, right? This muscle, we named it. That was what? Levator. Labi superioris, right? Levator labi superioris. Now, just the medial portion. So, only the medial part of it. So, I mean this part, this one. Right? Only the medial part. That's the name which you should remember whenever there is any fight with non medico right he'll immediately run away the name is levator labi superioris right aliquae 
Nazi. Right? This is leave it to Levi Superior is aliquid Nazi. This is like cousin of leave it to Levi Superior is. Because this aliquid Nazi, that means this muscle will elevate the upper lip plus it will also be dilating the nostrils. Right? Because it is connected to LR cartilage. Correct? LR cartilage. Now imagine LR cartilage is there. Right? Over here, that's LR cartilage on both the sides if it is pulled. Right? <clears throat> right? So that is what you, you use in when you are angry. Right? So this is for anger. Right? When the nostrils are dilated. Right? So let's highlight it with red color. Right? This contempt with also red color. Right? So anger, contempt, that's their department. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, yeah, there is one more muscle. There is one more muscle, right, which we can see over here. I, I'll use a different color over here, right? Just over here, right? That is nasalis. Same function, right? Nasalis dilate the nostrils right but at the same time right if if something is not good so then you say mm, right so this is to create it this is the special function to wrinkle the nose <laughs> right to wrinkle the nose right so that's the function of nasalis Okay. Now, first, I'll just tell you the name, right? And then we'll actually see that thing in figure. Because this is something which is quite important. It is a place. Let's say that's the lip, right? That's the upper lip. And that's the lower lip. Okay. So, from lateral angle, right, the distance from here to here, right, about half an inch or 1.25 centimeters. This particular point is called as the modulus, right, it is called as modulus, modulus. This is the junction where five muscles will be coming, five muscles will be coming, one that deeper fiber, right, which was coming, that was the buccinator, right? So, so let's name it like this, say. So, buccinator. Then second one, the zygomaticus major, right? That was coming over here. So, zygomaticus major, major. Then third one, the levator angularis, again at an angle. And the and the resorius, right? So all these muscles, right? They were over here like this. So levator anguli oris and resorius plus one muscle which we have not seen yet, right? Because the way there is levator anguli oris, there will be depressor anguli oris. So that is depressor anguli oris and it makes sense right because if there is for elevation so there has to be someone for the depression also right to elevate and depress and don't use that depressor anguli oris because again it is for that grief extreme pain right extreme pain when when the jaw drops right that is the extreme pain so we'll see that Okay, so this modulus, modulus is where, that's where these muscles, this would be the modulus. So all these fibers, they will be coming over here, right? So I'll just write M. M is for modulus. <coughs> so coming back to the same image again. Now, this time, we'll be studying all those rest of the muscles. Now, see the muscles which are on the lower part, right, lower part. As such, there are three muscles. 
right three muscles over here one two three right there are three muscles but these three muscles they are they are deeply embedded in each other mixed with each other right so we'll try to see them though it is seen quite properly right so see the one muscle which is going like this right so this one that's the depressor angularis right so this is depressor anguli oris so it's something which depresses the angle of the of the mouth right then this muscle see this one right this one this one it will pull the lower lip down so depressor labi inferioris right inferioris and then this muscle this muscle right and and sometimes we say ki yaar after once we come out of the exam yaar pass ho jayenge pata nahi right that pata nahi thing right that is doubt mm. right when you doubt so that is mentalis it is mentalis right so mentalis is for doubt right that expression that is for doubt right in other words say it it is it, it is just acting on the chin right it is acting on the chin and meantime see so many muscles they are deployed for this dukhi thing so it is like depressor anguli oris and the depressor labia inferioris it literally makes you dukhi atma right so this is for grief extreme sad right that is for grief so that's how they are all arranged right meantime say other muscles which we now which you now know so well this was what psoriasis this is the best muscle zygomaticus major right then this was levator anguli oris right and this is depressor anguli okay so this is lao to so this is dao right so this is lao this is dao right so all dukhi atmas but anyway right that is also part of it okay so this is how these muscles they are arranged we now move on to this neck so this one this is all okay right sternocleidomastoid you know it so well these are all what infrahyoid right infrahyoid muscles so medially stylohyoid and then omohyoid you uh, uh, sternohyoid right sino okay. sternohyoid then omohyoid right all all those you know it and yeah this is what digastric right belly of digastric anterior belly of digastric right so these are the muscles but when we look at these muscles of the neck while watching this there is one muscle which is covering all of them like a sheet a uh, depressor anguli you said upper i'm um, sorry i i missed something depressor anguli oris ha uh, it depresses the angle of the angle of the mouth right so it goes down this levator anguli oris right it it elevates the angle of the mouth something you want to ask or okay just let me know right i'll just see that okay so what i was telling was this right say over here say levator anguli that was where here here right levator anguli oris and levator labia superioris both both of them right so this is levator anguli oris that is for the elevation of the mouth right and over here see this is this is like zygomaticus major levator anguli oris and and this zygomaticus minor 
right all all these are like this right one after the another right so so don't confuse they all are into one on one side okay now this is what is called as the platysma this is this muscle will cover everything right the entire muscle this is what is called as the platysma this is within the subcutaneous fascia of neck right so within subcutaneous fascia of neck and this is for horror error right so that is what when the wrinkles and everything appears over there right i'm so afraid so over here there are two borders right both the borders are free so that's the anterior border and this is the posterior border right and both these borders they are free now this particular muscle when you when you look at look it from the from the side right? look it from the side so this is where right, on the mandible it would be attached right but few fibers they actually run and they run into orbicularis oris right they run into orbicularis oris so few fibers they run into into orbicularis oris right so that's where it depresses the chin right that horror effect so that's how say these muscles they are connected okay so if we now really try to recollect everything right say this is smile immediately you know this part zygomaticus major right this is something no one would forget so if that is the case then what about grin right viva kesara mm, okay right that was resorius right? that was resorius okay then what about the sad part right the sad one two muscles right levator labi superioris and levator anguli oris right then so that was three then what about grief right extreme one so that is grief and very sad so that was depressor angularis right okay depressor angularis and there was one more right depressor angularis and the which one depressor labi inferioris right depressor angularis and depressor labi inferioris right and this mentalis was for doubt so depressor labi inferioris right so we saw that so let's add over here uh doubt so that is mentalis so these are the five one will see few muscles after some time right meantime the horror was platysma right platysma two three muscles we have kept in reserve because of one thing because they they are part of the scalp so when when we'll study the scalp just after 2 3 minutes at that point we'll see those muscles again
Right? Okay. We missed that contempt, right? It was good to miss that contempt. So that is zygomaticus minor, right? So that was the contempt. So we talked about grin is horror grief. Okay. Yeah. Whistling. Whistling. Right. How can we forget that? Whistling. For whistling, it was the joint operation of vaccinator and orbicularis. Oris. Right. And finally, say for eyes. Right, it was orbicularis oculi, right, palpebral part, and the ocular part, and the lacrimal part. So, this is for gentle eye close, this is just to shut hard, right, and this is for that lacrimal to fill up the lacrimal sac. <laughs> Stylish anger. <laughs> okay. No, definitely. And, and the brain too is super interesting. Trust me, brain is just so interesting. You will relish it. Okay. So when, when you say that, I just remembered something, right? We missed that anger, right? Anger. So that's where that levator labi superioris aliquae nazi, right? <clears throat> right? So that is levator labi superioris aliquae nazi and that nasalis, right? Okay. Few muscles that is for surprise when you say, hmm, really? Right? So that is. That is when there are wrinkles on the forehead. So that is when the frontalis would come. Right? So that is that is surprise. Mm -hmm. So let's see now the scalp. Again, in scalp, one method is like that there is a mnemonic. So S for skin, C for connective tissue, right? Then A for aponeurosis. This is L for loose areolar tissue and P is for periosteum. Ah, uh, no, no, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll see that also, right? It is good to remember that way. But let's see it in our style. First, let's remove all the layers, right? We remove all the layers and then one by one we start placing the layers. So, so that that is how we'll be able to understand it properly, right? So all layers removed right so what we really see right this is what is called as the calvaria right or the dome of cranium so that's that's the calvaria right because our entire skull that is scalp right and the face right this scalp is pretty tough right and if you do like to then you will be able to feel that yes the whole whole assembly it can be moved so it is not just fig rigidly fixed to the to the bone right it is everything is moving in fact for the frontalis so it is like you'll see that right that how how it is associated okay so once we see this right all bones right all bones so you know it so well so this is frontal right then that one would be the occipital parietal and temporalis now this is pericranium right the first thing first is the pericranium so it is this part right pericranium just from the mnemonic point of view, we can start with say this 5, right? So this is P, 
pea of scalp pericranium now this is loosely attached to the surface of the bones right so there is there is very interesting clinical application and we'll see that so over here what happens is this pericranium it is not so that it is simply wraps the whole skull no this is loosely loosely attached right loosely attached to to the surface of the bones but what really happens is that you know that these are the sutures right these are the sutures at sutures it, it is very firmly attached right it is adherent to suture so loosely attached to surface obviously of bones right but at sutures right at sutures firmly attached now see what happens if there is any collection right in any of underneath so that collection that fluid that would start spreading but when those suture lines would come at that point it would stop so any collection over here it will take the shape of the bone right it will take the shape of the bone that is what is called a cephal hematoma right we'll see that but just to give the understanding that because it is forming those margins very tight margins right so over here at the sutures those sutural ligaments they bind very firmly because inside is the endocranium right and this is the peri peri is just surrounding it so at sutures right endo and peri right they are firmly attached okay yeah now see this is the temporal bone right now in temporal bone there is temporal fascia in temporal fascia right, there are two layers one is superficial one is deep so this is this is like a base is created right so that then now you, you know this this is temporal bone right temporal bone and this fascia what we are what you are watching is right that is covered by that is the temporal bone it is covered by this is called as the investing layer right so it is investing because it is not investing something but it is going into deep so investing deep layer of deep layer of temporal fascia right temporal fascia because this entire structure right scalp is very interesting as we'll add more and more components into it okay so that's the fascia and now on top of it right on top of it so first was pericranium so that is done now we are over here this is what this is loose connective tissue right this is loose connective tissue so it is loose connective tissue s is skin right s is skin so we are going in this direction okay. so this is a loose connective tissue so with a with a forcep if you really pick right you will be able to pick it up right this is quite loose and it is overlying pericranium correct so that's that's like number four number four over here and this this tissue right, that will be overlying over here it overlies the deep temporal fascia right what we saw right this thing would give you a fantastic understanding when we'll watch that schematic figure that otherwise we keep on confusing that how exactly it is happening right there is a deep fascia then there is a loose connective tissue then there is a muscle then there is a superficial no everything would come seamlessly right so this is this is fine okay moving on to the next one now see this is very interesting figure this is where we have done two things 
we have kept the lower layer intact and then we have created a window just to see that how tough the structure is this internal one this one that is that loose connective tissue right this is the loose connective tissue the tissue which is now next to it this is tough right this is tough this is what is called as the epicranium this is epicranium now this layer to see it properly let's put it in full right so this is just for just just to show yeah this is this is like say in this layer over here this is like pure aponeurotic layer there is aponeurosis and see over here there is frontalis muscle right so this is muscle but over here you can see that it is a combination right it is partly by tendon right because aponeurosis is flattened tendon right so this is flattened tendon and partly by this muscle over here it is frontalis on the back side this is occipital right all right so just yeah now we have put the entire layer right this is the full epicranium so in our this we are over here right that is aponeurosis Now, in this aponeurosis, there is one portion which is pure aponeurotic, right? There is pure. So, see, can you see that this line, right? Very clearly, this is white, this is muscular. So, that is, that is the beginning all the way. It goes down and over here, that's the occipitalis. So, this area, what you saw over here, this portion, right? This is called as the galia aponeurotica. This is called as galia aponeurotica. That's the real aponeurosis, a flat tendon. This is a sheet of tendon, right? It is also called as, because this, this layer itself is called as epicranium, so it can also be called as epicranial aponeurosis, right? A simple name, epicranial aponeurosis. Good. In the front part, over here, that is frontalis. Frontalis. So this is where the frontalis is actually attached, right? And this frontalis, when it contracts, mm -hmm. right? So it will raise upper eyebrow, right? It will raise upper eyebrow, right? And that is what is called as the surprise, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So that is surprise. surprise so that is frontalis right and over here right over here that is occipitalis that is where the occipitalis is so this occipitalis above the superior nuchal line right it, it gets connected and we have seen that thing when we discuss the skull right so that's how this galia aponeurotica it plays its role so three layers down right only two layers are left now right same image so that's the say the function how the frontalis and occipitalis they they really work right to raise this impression this impression is also called as the frowning, right? Frowning. So when when frontalis only works, right? Say only frontalis. So then what it does is frowning, right? Mm -hmm. And when frontalis with occipitalis. then it raises the eyebrow right so that's what we say frontalis right the frowning right or 
say raising the eyebrows right all those surprise reactions right they are they are by frontalis and the occipitalis yes over here now these are the some extra muscles which we now see because now they will be part of it this is for the full effect right full effect of frown right this is what is called as the frowning right for the full effect there are two more muscles one this is depressor supercilii right this is depressor supercilii this one supercilii this one and for the proper orientation right for this right there is a this one this is procerus this one which is over here right this is procerus so it is the joint operation of procerus depressor supercilii and the frontalis which gives full fledged frowning right full fledged frowning that is that is by these theory muscles okay if you go still more deeper right if you want to create vertical lines on the forehead right vertical lines on the forehead so this is a deeper muscle so i'll write for vertical lines right so expressive these muscles are so for vertical lines this is the muscle which is a deeper muscle it is called as corrugator superciliary right again superciliary area right so this is corrugator superciliary So this is for creating those vertical lines. Okay. So on top, so we saw first the deep temporal fascia, right? Then there was that loose alveolar tissue. And then this is the superficial, this one, right? That one is superficial. temporal fascia now as we go deep okay this is very interesting right normally not present in everyone right but at times you'll get this muscle over here the name of this muscle is auricularis right auricularis external ear is auricle right so this is a muscle it is as such it is called as the vestigial muscle right this is a vestigial muscle it means it is not present in everyone and this muscle can move external ear right like hathi right so he must he must be having a very powerful well controlled auricularis Right? But this muscle, it is not present in every individual, only in some individual and such individuals, they can move their ear, right, external ear, right. So it can move external ear, right, not present in all. Okay, this is a different specimen as compared to what we are watching, right, because it was present in, that's why it was taken over here okay so now we move on to the so s c a l p this is this this now this is the connective tissue right now this is like only the most superficial part right so we are now watching the cutaneous tissue here it is now this subcutaneous right
subcutaneous or the superficial fascia right this is subcutaneous or the superficial fascia now this fascia this is this is fibrous and it is quite dense right and how it is actually associated this is fibrous right and you have to divide it in two parts center part and the peripheral part right in the central part it is dense right it is dense and in the peripheral part it is thin so it is this portion right that is thick this is the layer which gives proper passage right it gives proper passage to blood vessels and nerves right this is the so when we when we really see this thing right and this is the final layer that is the in scalp this is skin right and that skin is tough this is hair bearing thick skin right that's hair bearing and so much so that you can even even watch you can watch the hair follicles also right you can watch the hair follicles right same image just to lift that how tough and how thick the structure is okay so now we come to this layers of scalp right what we saw see this is this is skin so this is one right with hair then second is that connective tissue superficial fascia with blood vessels so these are the blood vessels right and see these are the emissary veins and that's the reason that this area is called as the dangerous area it is called as the dangerous area this one because any infection over here it would be carried all the way down and it will go into this this uh, sagittal sinus right or the cranial sinuses in inside the skull so let's see right then this third one was that aponeurotic one right so this is a then there was loose connective tissue right and then finally it is the pericranium and then after the pericranium right see this is after the pericranium so this is diploid diploid means it's like a sandwich there are two layers right two layers two tables of the skull outer and inner right so this is like diploid which is between outer table and the inner table and then the dura mater right and then the brain starts so it is the superior sagittal sinus we'll be discussing these sinuses at depth right in a single shot so that you get the entire picture but that's how they really enter just by piercing all the way right so these are the layers of scalp so up to this point up to this point it is like scalp right up to this point right that is scalp and then comes the bone and then the dura mater and you are inside right this is over here for the superficial temporal region right over here this one is for temporal region what we need to see is this see there was superficial fascia then then there is epicranial aponeurosis and see the temporal fascia in between temporal is muscle right over here right and the temporal fascia so how the temporal fascia it is it is covering this right that's the muscle one more see in this that epicranial aponeurosis is fine this is the frontalis muscle right which is connected that's the frontal bone but in between in between there is loose areolar tissue right that's what we saw because say a l p what we are talking about is say this loose areolar tissue right that's over there and this is sub aponeurotic 
over here this is a ponyrosis which is tough this is very cranium that is tough so we are talking about this area right say this is the layer of loose areolar tissue so any fluid right it can reach all the way up to this orbital septum and the blood collection so that is something which can lead to say that uh, subconjunctival area right it can lead to subconjunctival area because see the thing is that this frontalis is as such it is not connected to to bone anywhere right it is just connected to this aponeurosis so frontalis right there is no bony attachment so there is no bony attachment right all the way that fluid it would go all the way into the subaponeurotic space to eyelid to it will lead to con con subconjunctival area okay some important aspects when it is said that wounds any injury wounds of scalp right they don't gape because it's a tough structure gaping means creating a gap right but because it is a tough structure so normally any of the injury they they will not be separated too much right it will not gape subject to if epicranial aponeurosis is damaged is split if epicranial aponeurosis is split then it is okay but otherwise it's a tough structure so it will keep the things together right but any of the wound of scalp right they will bleed profusely bleed heavily because simple it is like a tough structure right and then there is a blood vessel so this is a tough structure so this fibrous tissues they will prevent the retraction of blood vessel right so it will keep on bleeding that's the reason whenever there is any injury a tight pressure is to be applied on the skull right tight pressure needed right to stop bleeding and it will bleed profusely because these fibrous tissues they are there right these fibrous tissues they won't permit retraction of the blood vessels okay we talked about that cephal hematoma right in which we said that fluid which is deep right it takes it takes the shape of that bone right because we we saw that that this pericranium right this pericranium it is connected right at the suture so any fluid if it is this is deep to pericranium right any fluid over here it will take the shape of the bone right will take shape of the bone we talked about that dangerous area right this you should not forget this is the dangerous area of scalp right what was that that was say c a l p right that's the dangerous area because over here right it can carry infection to right it when it can carry infection to most important this cranial sinuses cranial sinuses right venous sinuses so that way it will go all the way right? and uh, we can add one more thing over here we said that it bleeds profusely but one more thing any of the 
any of the wound of the scalp, it heals also very properly, right? Because it has got rich blood supply, right? This is a rich blood supply, so it will heal properly. All right, so that was for today, right? Thank you so much and keep using your Zygomaticus Major, right? Thank you so much and see you in the next session of Brain Part 1. Thank you and bye-bye. Good night. And I'm saving this and I'll put it into our shared folder. All right.